nationality hat. Nee, I'm working at ETH in Zurich. Yeah, I'm Swiss and uh, I have a master degree in environmental physics. I spent also some time as a guest student at MIT in the US and I came back for my PhD also at ETH in Zurich. And then I did a postdoc at uh, NASA. And then I came back as a senior scientist and two years later I became an assistant professor. And I'm now full professor at ETH since uh, 2016. Climate extremes like droughts and heatwave have a lot of impacts for society. And there were very large uncertainties that we had in projections. So for instance, for heatwaves, it's quite a bit of spread in models in Europe. So some models showed a very large increase, some uh, less. So we needed to be able to reduce uncertainties. So the main aim was really to have more precise projections of those changes in extremes for both uh, type of extreme events. And what is specifically interesting about droughts and heat waves is they are tightly connected. So when you have higher temperatures, it leads to stronger droughts, but the dry condition actually can also amplify heat waves. What we did was to derive a range of uh, diagnostics which are derived from observations. And these are basically data sets or derived variables which can be used for the evaluation of climate models. So we have a range of diagnostics that are available there and it can be used for the validation of models. I would say for me, maybe the most important one is really this link between the water availability and the carbon cycle that we found this very tight coupling and that models don't represent this correctly. So I would say that's one of the most important variables. We found that the climate models underestimate the effect of droughts on CO2 uptake. And what happens uh, in current uh, climate is that when you have large amount of droughts on continents, uh, there is actually less CO2 taken up by plants, and this leads to a further increase in CO2 concentration in the air. And the models underestimate this uh, feedback, which means that uh, this could have very serious implications for projections. We had a few uh, nature publications, actually, but there is this, is this one paper where we could directly relate CO2 emissions to climate extremes. That was the first time it was done, so we can directly relate action. So how much CO2 are you emitting? globally to what is happening in terms of extremes. I think that was the first time to make this link. Another important paper in nature also was uh, this uh, link between the droughts and the carbon cycle. I think that was the first paper that really showed this global scale coupling. First demonstrated a global scale relationship and second showed that the models don't capture this. As a study, for instance, we also did a study on the attribution of um, compound extreme events. So we looked at the 2018 uh, heat waves and that were actually heat waves that occurred all across the northern hemisphere. We found that uh, those events had almost zero chance of happening without human-induced climate change. Mm-hmm.